and welcome to another video. I have a different video for you today. I was tagged by Dora. Dora is sweet, 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 crafty and creative. She is the Fluid Crafter. She has that name on her YouTube channel and she has that name on her Instagram channel. So if you don't know her, go and visit her channel right now or maybe before the video, whenever. Um, so she tagged me to do the 10 crafty questions or something like that. So basically it's 10 questions. It has to do with crafting or my crafting and well, just so that you can get to know me just a little bit better. A little bit better. <laughs> okay, so the first question. Um, my name, my name. I'm Portuguese, so I have a very, very Portuguese name and even though I was born in South Africa, my parents still kept the tradition and they gave me a very Portuguese name. So I will tell you my Portuguese name in Portuguese and then I will translate it. So in Portuguese it goes Marisa Isabel Carocho Figueiredo. Yeah, I know. I, I'm, it's, it's confirmed. I'm an alien. Um, especially those last two. So in English that would be Marissa or Marisa, however you want to pronounce it. And of course Isabel. And then in South Africa, my my surname, my um, the one I was born with, in the Karosho, that was translated to Karacho. So sometimes I used to get the cockroach out, but um, just that, that, was, that was when it was, I was being teased. I actually missed that now. Anyway, um, don't call me cockroach, please. So um, my last name now is Figueiredo, that's my husband's name, and I have no idea how to translate in English. Please don't ask me how to translate that, that in English. So um, so as you know, I've told you I was born in South Africa, so that's why you get this funny accent sometimes. Um, the South African accent is very, very deep, it's very, very powerful, um, but no one understands it. Only the South Africans understand it. Um, I have tried to change my accent a little bit. This why because when I came to Portugal, I was fifteen years old, and my English teacher didn't understand me. So that's when I saw it was a little bit urgent for me to put on maybe like a more British, if I could ever get that going. But I never lost the South African accent. Let's be honest, you 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 just can't lose it. It'll always be there, but a little bit faint. But it'll always be there. So now you know. Now you know. Um, question number two. Uh, how did you choose your YouTube name? My YouTube name is My Papers, Paints and Pens at the moment. But it's got a little bit of history, my YouTube name. My YouTube name didn't start with this name. It started with was Maribel Scraps. And why? Well, this goes way, way back. When I was trying to get pregnant, maybe 10 years ago, something like that. And I... You know, when, when you want to get pregnant, you search and search and search for information. You go onto the internet and you see this and that. And I found this wonderful community on an American, just an American forum or American community. A whole bunch of American girls and some foreign girls like myself. Um, and I was part of these cycle buddies. Imagine that. Uh, and my name there, when I logged in, my name was Marissa Isabel. And the poor American girls, they just, they just came up to me or... Oh, they sent me messages and they said, oh, your name is too long. We can't say your name. Can we call you Mary Bell? And I'm thinking, oh, that's so, so sweet. So it became Mary. I became Mary Bell. And in between these five years that I was trying to get pregnant and then I was in this community, I started a blog and I started my YouTube channel because I was really crafting. So I opened up my YouTube channel as Mary Bell Scraps. Made sense. Of course it didn't. Um, and then that changed a few years ago when I opened up my own online store for craft supplies and I called that Arts Number 7. So then I changed my YouTube name to Arts Number 7. And then my store, I closed it um, for personal reasons and also because business just wasn't, it wasn't going good. So I closed it um, and then I opened up an Instagram account at the more or less the same time. And because I had so many crafty passions, I had scrapbooking, I had mixed media, art journaling, bullet journaling, calligraphy, um, like calligraphy, calligraphy now, still learning, it's hard. Um, so I liked all those little arts and each of them use a certain thing. 
scrapping was scrapbooking was paper uh, mixed media and art journaling was paints and bullet journal and calligraphy is pens so that's why I became my papers paints and pens so there you have it but right, question number three your favorite craft style well that will all depend what I'm doing what craft I'm doing if it's um, scrapbooking it will be very colorful I like doing colors bright colors if it is mixed media I will go more for the blues and greens. Don't ask me why. I just love that combination of the blue and green and gold. Mm, wonderful. <laughs> if it's junk journaling, um, definitely vintage. The brown, the tans, and even the shabby chic. I like the shabby chic now. But I must be honest, the, the browns are starting to tie me a little bit. Um, and I keep going back to my scrapbooking and just doing some lively colors and bright colors. And even the mixed media and my art journaling. You can see. Big, big. Nice and colorful. Ah, okay. Um, question number four. Favorite place to shop craft supplies? Well, I'm in Portugal, and unfortunately, we have very, very, very little shops or stores physically. Um, that I, you know, those ones we don't have a Michaels, we don't have a Joanne's, we don't have a Hobby Lobby thrift store. I think mean, someone called them that. We don't have anything like that. anything. Even in, we don't even have anything that compares to either one of them. How sad is that? Oh, anyway, anyway, so um, as I was saying, and we don't have any because unfortunately in the past five years, a lot of the, a lot, and uh, by a lot I mean about 60 to 70% of our shops have closed. So they are either very far, far, far away from me, like two hours drive, three hours drive. So I don't, I'd go shop online. And I, I shop online in the Spanish shops. There is Up and Scrap. Funny, Spanish, it's Spanish, but it has an English name. Um, Mi Tienda. And there is also Midori, something like that. That's where I get my bullet journal supplies from. Midori. And of course, Alibaba, AliExpress, eBay. Okay. Um... I think the reason why all the Portuguese shops, um, this is just my theory, um, why they're all closing down is because our distributors, sorry about that, with a little minor interruption, it's hard doing videos when you're living with people, especially little people. <laughs> anyway, so the distributors um, in Portugal decided that they wanted more money and so they started selling to the public. Uh, of course, stealing, uh, not well, stealing, well, basically stealing the consumers that the shops had. Because, of course, they had better prices, so no one can compete with that. Anyway, so, uh, where was I? Question number five. Five, uh, top five crafters that most influenced me in the beginning. And this is hard, because only five, that's so unfair, we want to... I'm a hundred. Um, okay, so let's go. Well, let's keep it. I won't. I won't speak about my scrapbooking. I won't speak about my mixed media. Okay, it's just a little bit mixed media. I'll be speaking about those um, crafters that inspired me to start junk journaling because junk journaling is really very recent for me. It's um, I've been doing it for maybe a year and a half, something like that. Okay, so who inspires me? Um, there are a lot of girls on Instagram that inspire me. They don't have YouTube um, accounts, unfortunately. So I'll be giving you a little bit of both. Um, Brita. Brita Marterer. I'm She's German. Don't ask me how you pronounce her last name, but it's Brita. She's amazing. She's wonderful. She is so, so creative. I really, really love her. Now, I, I find myself um, replicating or doing my own version of her craft, of her style, of her, of her creations. And I love it. I really do love it. And every time I do, I do give her credit. So, because she really, really deserves it. And I love it. She's from Instagram, by the way. And then YouTube. Um, Shabby Debbie Duda. Did I say that right? <laughs> I hope I did. She's Australian. And she has wonderful creativity as well. And very, very inspiring to me. And then, of course, there is... There goes another name. I'm, uh, I'll, I'll link them all down. You know. We link them all down there. If we say them wrong, please, please... Um, apologizing um g Kerr. i know she's british but she lives in portugal so maybe one day she'll come over um she is also very very creative especially i love her shabby chic letters i really tried those out that was brilliant 
And then there's the Girl on the Ridge. I like her creativity as well. She has loads of uh, tutorials on YouTube. She's wonderful. She, you know, people just love um, spreading their creativity. And why not? And then, of course, there's Dora. Dora is the flirt crafter. You want to tag me. And um, she's extremely creative as well. And she, I love her vintage style for junk journals. That's why she inspires me quite a lot. Okay. And then if you want just a little bit of my mixed media inspiration, it would be the, I don't know if she's Russian or if she's Ukrainian, but she's one of those um, countries. Anna, and I'll try to, I'm, I'm reading this right here. Let me put this closer to me. Anna Babroshka. Okay, she's wonderful. So, so creative. So, so creative. And then, of course, there's uh, Joye de Fee. There's uh, Marie van der Zed. And, of course, Francisca from Heartmakers. Hot makes. She's Portuguese. So those are my top 10, maybe? I don't know. Um, not Definitely not top 5, but there were more. I know I mentioned more. I will link them all below. If you don't know them, you can go visit their, their channels. Number 6. My favourite colour. Again, this depends on what I'm doing. If it's scrapbooking, my favourite colour is... well, As long as they're bright. Um, but I do tend to go right now, um, if I were to do a scrapbook layout, I would go more for the pinks. <laughs> because I've scrapbooked enough of my boys and then I'm tired of the blues and the greens and the browns. and Pink. I'm a girl. I need pink in my life. So I'm on the pink. If I am doing my art journal, I will go for the blues and the greens. I love, like I said, I love that blue and green mixture. If I'm junk journaling, I will go for the browns and the tans. Vintage. But now I'm going for the shabby chic. And this is my shabby chic color palette. You've seen this before, right? No browns. Getting tired of the browns. I actually am getting very tired of the browns. Um, and that's maybe why I started the junk journal phase. Sorry, the art journal phase, which is very colorful. Um, so, next question. Number seven. Favorite tool. My favorite tool has to be my guillotine. My guillotine was one of the first crafty tools I bought and when I started crafting and that would be in 2006. It's the same guillotine. It's like those, you know, when you're in the fish market, I don't know if in America you have a fish market, but yeah, in Portugal we have a fish market and you know, the codfish, those humongous things, they put the codfish on the guillotine and they did a whoosh. And look at that, that was a whip. That was a bad, bad sound effect. Okay, they go. <laughs> was that any better? I don't think so. Um, anyway, it's one of those. It's not a trimmer. It's not one that you slide. It's one that you go. Get it all the way down. That's my, that's my guillotine. And it's been there. It's been with me for, uh, I don't know. Do your math. It's 2006. 15 years? I don't know. 14 years, maybe. 14 years. 13 years, before 13, 14 years. Um, I've been married for 14 years, so it can't be longer than that. Um, it's not very big. I think that's the only thing that if I'd bought, if I'd known that 12 by, the scrapbook and had 12 by 12 papers, I would have bought the A3 um, guillotine and not the A4. But anyway, it's been there. And, and it's the only, and I bought other trimmers and other guillotines and that one's just stuck with me. So that would be definitely one of my favorites. And another one of my favorites, now that I'm into junk journal, have to be this little thing here. And what is this little thing? And I only use this. I hardly use these and these and oh, that little thing there. Hardly use those. I use that. And when I don't have this handy, it's exactly the same thing using this. This here. And just to ruffle up the edge of the paper. That's what I use it for in for my junk journaling there, you know that to ruffle up the paper and especially especially my shabby chic junk journal that i'm doing all almost all my embellishments are ruffled up just the edges and it looks absolutely brilliant so that's another one of my favorites Elder. so there, that was portuguese order hmm. i won't tell you what it means it just means oh, so hmm. um next question question number eight where did you where did your love of, uh, of crafting come from I would have to say my mother. Definitely my mother. My mother, she was a seamstress. So she did all her clothes. She did all my clothes. She did all, all my brother's pants as well. 
Um, in South Africa, she was a seamstress. She painted, I know she painted a little bit, she painted ostrich eggs. She painted um, canvases. Um, that's, that's what I remember in South Africa. In Portugal, she went on to the, she stuck with the fabrics, but more threads. So she would do tapestry. She would do, uh, what do you call that one of the crosses? Um, uh, rah, 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 rah. Uh, anyway, you know those. Oh, I don't. How do you call them? Hold on. Anyway, you know tapestries and those little cross things where you do a whole bunch of pictures with a crossing. Oh my goodness! Tell me about going blank here. Anyway, um, and oh, embroidery. She would have, She did also embroidery. Um, oh, and, and cake design. Cake, cakes. She just did in South Africa. She used to make cakes. Oh my goodness! My mother's worse than I am. Um, talk about seven arts, yeah. Um, my mother, yes, she did cake design in South Africa, so a whole bunch. She was very, very creative, and she was very, very artsy. But of course, all in the, or mostly in the textile and thread department, where I am paper department and more paints, papers, paints, and pens. Um, so next question: When did you first start crafting? Okay, I first started crafting just after I got married. I got married in 2005 and I went to South Africa in 2006. It's about five, six months after I got married. I wanted to show my husband South Africa, the place where I was born. And I took a like a file folder, those plastic file folders. I don't know if you, I know in America you have those nice cardstock ones, but we have, we don't have those yet. We have the awful plastic things, you know, the colourful things like that. And it has these little um, plastic bags inside. Hmm? When you just shove your things inside. I don't know what you call these. Um, inserts. Hmm? Inserts. Um, excuse my English. Um, I should do this more often. <laughs> Practice my English. And I started, I just collected everything. I, I printed maps. No, actually, the first thing I did was I printed a map of... Well, we, we were going, we were going to Johannesburg, sorry about the glare. We printed maps and um, everywhere we went, I would just highlight where we went. And then everything, wherever I went, I would just collect. I would collect pamphlets, I would collect the tickets, um, photo, uh, maps, and then all the booklets and pamphlets and everything. And then my cousin, she's, she's still living in South Africa and she's very, very crafty. She says, what are you doing? And I said, oh, I'm just collecting everything. The memories. And yeah. And she says, no, well, why don't you just scrapbook? And I'm like, what? what, what? What's what? Scrapbook? <laughs> Had no idea what scrapbooking was. So she showed me what scrapbooking was. And I was just lost in love. And then after that, I came back to Portugal. And well, this this stayed just as it is. And the photos that I printed did not go in here. They went into another album. And that's when I started scrapbooking. I started, so this is 2006, I started with mini albums. I didn't start, funny enough, I didn't start with the layouts, the 12 by 12 layouts. My house is full of them now. Um, I started with mini albums. Um, that's how I started, the scrapbooking. And then I went on to mixed media, found mixed media, just fell in love. Um, so, but mostly all my craft, all my crafty creations are all based around memory keeping. My scrapbooking is definitely memory keeping. My junk journals are for memory keeping. Even my um, mixed media and my um, my art journaling, there's a lot of memories in my art journaling and a lot of memories in my mixed media projects. So basically my crafting is memory keeping. Is that a craft? Just invented that. Okay, now, oh, that's clear. I just closed my book where all my questions were. Okay, so where was I? <laughs> Last question, number 10. Favorite craft at the moment? Favorite craft, I think this is favorite craft project or favorite craft at the moment. I think we'll talk about the favorite craft project. So right now I think there have to be two projects that I've made. Let me look at them. So it is my last junk journal, this one here. Okay, my last junk journal where I used Sandy's um, layout style. I really, really love that. And of course this year's travel journal my my travel journal for this year i love this one and i have so many jeans out there i think i'm just gonna have to do another one next year this one's already full okay it's um full up until the end this was this year's travel so 
these are my two favorite projects someone's coming in <laughs> um, those are my two favorite craft projects and I've just closed and I've closed my book again why do I do this um, all right so now I have to tag a few people I don't know how many people I must tag I didn't quite get that but um, get that information but I'll tag a whole bunch of them now, I can't tag people those that most inspire me on Instagram so I'll have to tag those ones that just have YouTube channels so I will tag definitely will tag G all right I'll, I'll tag G G come on let me let me get to know you a little bit more better tell me why you're in Portugal <laughs> And then, well, I can't tag Dora because, you know, she's um, already been tagged. But I will tag Francisca from Heart Makes. Okay. And I will tag, who else? One more, one more. I wish I could tag Brita. But she doesn't have an uh, a YouTube channel. Hmm. Let me think this over. All right. Third one. Jackie from Crafty Pantaloons. I think that's how you said. She, all, all these girls are just amazing. Um, they really inspire me. Uh, Francisca, the Portuguese crafter, she um, she does art journaling and she's just amazing. Um, she's really inspiring me now to do the type of the type of uh, not junk journal, the type of art journal that I really want to do, which is freestyle. You know, just let it go. And I have greatest opportunity of having her here in my home she said right there, right there. Uh, and um it was amazing watching her creator just do those little pages that just didn't mean anything didn't have any but was so great and so liberating and that's what i really want to do with my art journey and she does these perfect little flowers um and i was trying to do the little flowers and um i noticed she was a lefty and i go what you doing your flowers with your left hand. So what I did, changed to my left hand and I started doing the flowers. And it just came out perfect. Look. Look at the difference. Left hand, right hand. Doesn't that one look so much real and so much better? Of course it does. So now I, I journal with my left hand. How's that for a strategy? So that would be Francisca that I'm tagging. It would be... Jackie from Crafty Pantaloons and Shabby Dabby Dooda. <laughs> Come on, girls. Let me get to know you now. I'll be seeing you later.